What's up, guys? What's going down, man? We're glad you're back. We're in uh, Hosea chapter 8, and this is uh, Paul and Stephen's uh, study in the Word. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's study, man. We want to uh, We want to uh, bless you guys because, you know, you're so great, so awesome, that we want to help you study this Bible because the Bible is so good to read and to dive deep into. And we've been diving deep because Hosea is a – it's some deep stuff. Yeah. And it's got that poetry and that uh, – it's like poetry in motion. And I'm just hoping that I'm flowing with the motion as it, it brings that poetry on us, man. <laughs> but it's good stuff, man. I'm glad you guys are here. And we're on Chapter 8. And uh, yeah, let's let's go ahead and get down, guys. So chapter eight, verse one says, put the trumpet to your lips like an eagle. The enemy comes against the house of the Lord because they have transgressed my covenant and rebelled against my law. So I, I want to set the framework up of kind of how we're going to understand the, the rest of all of this uh, scripture here. It's set up against the covenant in Deuteronomy at the uh, end of the book. It had like um, the people stand on one side of the mountain and then Moses stand on the other. And they were talking about how if they believe or follow or live by the covenant, then they'll have the covenant blessings. And that's like uh, peace, prosperity, you know, um, grain and seed in its time. And then uh, the other side was if they don't, they'll have enemies that are going to to take over them. They're going to have famine. They're going to have destruction. They even may have exilement from their their land that they're getting. So this whole uh, chapter that is going to be set up and brought to bear for their breaking of this covenant, the transgressions of the covenant, the Mm -hmm. punishment that's going to happen from this covenant. So. Yeah, and anytime that it's talking about the law, like that's what it's referencing. It's referencing back to the first five books of the Bible, the Torah. Mm-hmm. That it's it's talking about that. So like anytime that you read in Psalm where he's like, oh, you know, I love yeah. your law, I love your instruction, I love. Yeah. Like, and it's pointing you back to those very foundational mm-hmm. uh, first five books of your Bible: Genesis, mm-hmm. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Like Paul was just saying, yeah. and so that's going to give you a little like that is a a good foundational piece that man. Uh, the majority of the things that the rest of your Bible is going to be talking about, it's going right. to be referencing hardcore. Yeah. Like you see the Exodus pop up all, yeah, all the time. time. Yeah, all the time. Egypt. It'll be like, it's going back to Egypt. Right. Egypt. Going like, back we've Egypt. seen that all throughout yeah. Hosea. It's like those, right. those things really um, continue to resonate in the story of Israel throughout um, the rest of your Bible. And so it's yep. going to keep pointing you back to like, man, what was that covenant about? What was it really about? Yeah. And uh, what was and the truth behind it? What was its yeah. foundations? Yeah. yeah. I think uh, that is a good word because um, when we are reading through Hosea or, or anything, it's trying to understand like the uh, context in which they're speaking in or the history, because it's going to always refer back to uh, the Torah or events that's happened in their time frame, and sometimes we'll see that, and they'll be like, "Well, remember Tama or remember this." I'm like, "Oh, I don't remember that." No, I need to <laughs> go look at it. That's right. So that's Absolutely. that's good for us to go back and study the Torah. Mm-hmm. Uh, a buddy told me two things. He said, "One is like everything after the Torah is just commentary on the Torah, mm-hmm. and so all this Old Testament and New Testament is all commentary on what the, the Torah was talking about because that's the foundation." of uh, all of their scripture, the law. And I say Torah, but I meant to tell you it's Torah. Torah. Yeah, yeah. an actual, but uh, us American or not Americans, <laughs> us English speakers put the accent on the the first syllable rather than the last syllable. Yeah, a little quick uh, Hebrew uh, thing there. But, uh, yeah, so whenever we um, study the history, and I, I want to give an example of why it's be like that. So if I was to say, like, uh, man, remember 9-11, you know, well, we only think of the number, or we don't think of the number. Everybody else, if they would read back and they'd see, we just say, remember 9-11, they wouldn't understand anything about that. It's, What's significant about that? Yeah, but, that? yeah, they'd be like, it's just a number, 9-11. But for us, we understand deeply the, 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 the thing that happened, the tragedy that went down that day. There were emotions. There yeah. were, like, yes. Yeah, it's just a lot of things, things that. Uh, it's not just in a history book. Right? Yeah. And so that's uh, kind of what, when we look at this stuff, when it says refer back mm-hmm. and it's talking about the Torah, it's in that sense. And so it's important for us to read scripture. So if you want to start and you haven't started on Hosea, well, then go ahead and start on Hosea with us. But <laughs> after that, go back to the Torah, read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, because they're very, very important foundational steps to understanding uh, uh, kind of the history of the Bible. So. Anyway, it says, they cry out to me, my God, we of Israel know you. Israel has rejected the good. The enemy will pursue him. I think it's uh, funny that they are crying out to God. They're like, my God, 
We know you, Israel. We know you, God. We're your people. Yeah. We're called by your name, right? <laughs> but then the very next one says, Israel has rejected the good. Mm. It's like, man, they, they do not know me is what God is saying. They do not know me, that man. That sounds like something that Jesus says a little later on. You're right, yeah. You know, we talk like, about, mm, you're not sons of Abraham, you. man. You're out to me, Lord, Lord. Yeah. I don't know you. That is right, man. He, he says, uh, you, you think you're sons of Abraham, but you're sons of the devil. And mm. so, like, man. And that goes back to Hosea, what he calls his kids. Yeah, you know, yeah. Not lo mine. ami. <laughs> yeah, not my people. Lo, I'm, lo ami, not my people, man. Yeah. yeah so that's uh, uh that's I, I've heard somebody say that that is the scariest uh, scripture in the Bible when he says, uh, "Depart from me, I never knew you." Yeah, it's like you said, "Lord, Lord," and I did all the things that you say, and he says, "Depart from me, I, I never knew and it's you." It's meant for us, us to check our hearts and say. <sighs> Yeah. I don't want to assume, you know. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to seem, assume anything, man. Uh, Cause it, is it, this is my heart behind it, man. It's either because or for. Is our actions for salvation mm. or is it because of salvation? Yeah. Good. That's the real heart behind it, man. When somebody told me that, and I was like, because I didn't make that up, but when somebody told me that, I was like, you are dad gum right because. The reason I do all I do is because of what has God done for me, mm -hmm. not for God to love me. Right. It's from him to him and through him yeah. to all things. Hey, right? hey man, hey that man. That wasn't me. That was a friend. That yeah. said, <laughs> a friend named a Paul. Friend, a friend of, a friend of <laughs> and a not me, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the that's the uh, Paul of Tarsus, man. <laughs> he said that, but they have rejected the good. That means they have rejected the uh, the law. They've rejected the blessings of the law, and some even say they've rejected the good is the good one, uh, mm -hmm. because uh, it's uh, in, in Hebrew uh, the word is um, tov, and it's like uh, uh, good, uh, yeah, it means good, but it can mean also a person. Mm -hmm. It could be like the. A good person. While in English we have words for those, but in Hebrew they just use the same thing, and so you just got like only one who is good. Yeah, right? that's right, and that is Why God. Why call me good? Yeah, uh, there's one who is good. That's right, and so the they've rejected God, mm. the good one. And uh, because of that, that's why they have enemies after them. It says they have set up kings, but not by me. They have appointed princes, but I did not know it. With their silver and gold, they have made idols for themselves that they might be cut off. Man, it's like, uh, how do they cry out and say, it, it's funny, because God is bringing an indictment on them, man. I think in the past I've said something how this is like a lawyer speaking in a courtroom, and he is saying, these things I have against you. And so he's like, you're calling out to me saying that you know me, yet first off, I'm the one who appoint kings. And matter of fact, he said that David's would be the throne that would last forever. He's like, but is, is David's family on the throne? Mm. Uh, No. It's like you've appointed your own king, and therefore I'm going to destroy it. He's like, you've appointed your own princes. It's like, oh, I don't know them, man. They're not my people. They're not the people I wanted. And then it says, and even above that, it says you've taken all this stuff, and you have made uh, idols from them. Yeah. He's like, dude, because of those things, I am cutting you off. He says, he has rejected uh, your calf. Oh, Samaria is saying, my anger burns against them. How long will they uh, uh, be incapable of innocence? For from Israel is even this, a craftsman made it so it is not God. Surely the calf of Samaria will be broken to pieces. We're talking about that reference again. Uh, this is where Rehoboam sets up those uh, altars up in these high places because mm. they can't go to Jerusalem. To keep them from going down to Jerusalem. That's and right. Reuniting and all that. Yep. Yeah. And it's also a reassignment when uh, they came out of Egypt and they – were grumbling because they didn't feel or see the presence of God. And so Aaron made the calf, and he's like, here is the God that has brought you out of Egypt. Right. you know. And God is saying, wait, wait a second. He's like, hold on, hold on a second. I'm invisible. He's like, so if you made it, it ain't That's me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, man. And I do want to say, though, man, how often do we make God in our own image? How often do we take things and say, Oh, well, I believe God would do this, or I think my God does this. or And it's really powerful in the sense that people say, uh, a God in my own image. It's like, uh, no, we are in his image. He is not in our image. Yeah, know? we feel like it's something comforting, like where it's like, oh, that's easy for me to understand. It's like, no. 
That's hmm. not who God is. That is not, man. <laughs> he's going to he's going to blow your mind. He's going to do things differently than yeah. how you would do it because you're not God. Yeah. And just to receive that and to say, "Okay, I'm not yeah. going to make an anything and, and worship and lay down my loyalty for that because it's unstable ground. Like those things are going to be crushed. That's those right. things are corruptible." Yeah, I think uh uh anytime we try and form God in our own image, we're just setting ourselves up for failure because it is not the unshakable foundation of the true God. Yeah. It says, for they sow the wind and they reap the whirlwind. Man, I heard that in a movie and I couldn't figure out where I'd heard that before. And then as I'm studying Hosea, then now I'm like, oh. oh. That was deep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like, wow. <laughs> uh, it says, uh, uh, the standing grain has no heads. It yields no grain. Should it yield strangers would swallow it up. Dude, that's just a continuing of of the wrath and the punishment that comes upon the people of Israel who are supposed to bear the name of Christ, but instead reject the good. They reject God. They reject the blessings of the covenant in their actions as they continue to live lives that are uh, syncretous, which means that they are both worshiping or claiming to worship God and then also worshiping the bells, all of these other things that they think rely on to give them grain, to give them life, to give them uh, uh, vitality. And it's going to consume them. Israel is swallowed up. That's right, yeah. Going back to what we said last episode, that you think you're owning these things. You think that these things are going to bring you life. And it's like it's going to take life from you. It's going to consume you. That's right. Israel is swallowed up. They are now among the nations like a vessel in which no one delights. For they have gone up to Assyria like a wild donkey all alone. Ephraim has hired lovers. Even though they hire allies among the nations, now I will gather them up and they will begin to diminish because of the burden of the king of princes. It's like uh, their actions is in order to be saved from this impending destruction on them as they're about to be attacked, they're trying to hire all these people to help them. And God is like, dude, it doesn't matter what you do. I'm going to gather you up and destroy you because of the sin that you had. You know, in the... um, And they were talking about in those commentaries about how this is a a part of the covenant curses that come upon them when they forsake their God, when they don't serve the king who's brought them to the place that they were at. Because if they fail to do what they said they would do in loving God, then God is going to remove them from the land, Mm -hmm. that their home will not be there anymore, but he will bring a a justice on them. And let's make no mistake, it is justice. Whenever... uh, They are told to do something, and they agree to it. It's not like they were punished or anything because of something they didn't want to do. They sat there and made this covenant with God himself. He says, they say, we will do all the things that you have called us to do. And then when the time came, they did the opposite of everything that they have called us to do. And because of that, the punishment comes, man. Mm Mm-hmm. It says, even though they hire allies among the nations, now I will gather them up and they will begin to diminish because of the burdens of the king of princes. Since Ephraim has multiplied altars of sin, they have become altars of sinning for him. Boy, that's 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 crazy because of how we talked about those altars of sin, the altars that they put up. Yeah. They put up all these altars because I'm not going to say they tried to do the right thing. Uh, because like you said uh, in the last episode, I believe, he was like, yo, our heart is deceitful. You know, you say you're doing this because you want to do good, but yeah. are you really? Are you really? You know, and I think in the same way, because this is, I think it's Jeroboam or Rehoboam in which set up all these altars in these high places. Mm-hmm. And so y- y- is he really setting them up so that people can worship properly? I'm doing drop quotes, guys. <laughs> worship <laughs> properly? <laughs> or or was he doing it because he wanted to be the supreme ruler yeah. and have them on 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 his side yeah and so it's like he's he's acting like he's doing this for uh uh to to uh, yeah we're we're trying to do the right thing we want to that's right yeah we want to alleviate this uh, different yeah yeah a little bit (laughs) different and And what does paul say man if any if if he got this light little little bit thing a little 11 levels a whole lump but he says man even if an angel comes to you, an angel or ourselves come to you and preach any gospel contrary to the one we preached before, it doesn't matter if it's just a little different. He's like, man, he'd be condemned. Yeah. Man, he even actually used stronger words than that. And condemned, he says, may he be accursed or may he go to hell mm-hmm. if they change up the gospel. And that's what Ray Boehm doing, man. It makes it look like, oh, we're just trying to show you that you can sacrifice for sins and it's there's by a, God. There's but, a different way. Yeah. It's just different. 
It just looks a little bit different. It's, it's the same stuff. <laughs> Man, talking with people all the time, they're like, oh, like we're studying the Bible. Like this is okay. Like how this is working out, how this is. And it's like, Man, you know, you know who else studied the Bible apparently pretty well? Satan. Satan. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, like just because just because you're you're going at it like that, like man, be be very cautious and yeah. careful about how, like you said, proper worship. Man, mm-hmm. that we're not making something on our own according to our own wisdom. Yeah, uh, but that we're falling in line with with what the Word of God has called us to. And I think I I believe that God has gifted and entrusted. Mm-hmm. Like even church leadership for those things to yeah, to definitely. bring some clarity on those those matters and for us to to trust them. The scary thing is that man, your church leaders, whoever it is, your yeah. teachers, man, they have a responsibility. huge responsibility, yeah. and and we will be judged harshly. You are right. For it, says, hey, I wouldn't. Which is scary. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> as I, one who does. Uh, James and says you, so. Paul, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and I do. I, I actually uh, go to a lot of people and be like, man, I'm. I'm not heretical in this thinking, am I? You know, because I don't want to be. You yourself to somebody else. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so it's like everybody. I remember we did a podcast on uh, on leadership, man. So y'all guys should check that out. Uh, it's on Christ and Culture. Well, it's me and, and, and Pastor Stephen again talking about leadership. But in it, man, you were talking about how everybody is under a leader. Mm-hmm. And, and so we should submit ourselves in that way so that we make sure that we're responsible for the gospel that we preach. It doesn't matter what type of leadership you're in. You're not at the top. And matter of fact, you will never be at the top because King Jesus is at the top. There you go. <laughs> and so we need Which to... is a relief. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> it uh, should be a relief, it not, is. not a uh, burden. A burden. Yeah. yeah. I don't I don't want the responsibility. It's a privilege that God has placed the responsibility yeah. On me, and because of that, man, it is an amazing thing to do. But it also means that I don't have to worry about the results if I'm doing what the boss says. Mm -hmm. And if the boss says do it, I'm gonna do it and let him work out all the pieces, man. You know, like Pastor Steven said it, man. I'm gonna believe it, man. (laughs) Oh my gosh! Okay, (laughs) let's go on. What verse are we on? We're on uh, eleven. Says since Ephraim has multiplied altars to sin, they have become altars of sinning for him. Oh, I, I want to mention one more thing yeah, about yeah. that. Is that like it's 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 funny because they put these things up here to sacrifice for sin, so that way that you know they can kill the rams. But what the they have done, <laughs> yeah, the irony yeah, that, that like, now they that have become the place of sin. That is where they commit their yeah. sins, man. And so the uh, same way with us is like we see these things. Are helping us to get closer to God, but the irony is, is that they are so pulling us far away, away from Him. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's crazy, man. The Bible just be just revealing some stuff, don't it? Yes. It says, "Although I wrote to Him ten thousand precepts of my law, they are regarded as a strange thing." So uh, that strange thing. What's your say uh, for that word? Does it have? They would be regarded as something strange. Yeah. So I, I read a, a thing, and they said that the, the word that they use there, which I don't remember, I should because I'm trying to learn Hebrew, but it says it's foreign, mm-hmm. and which is, is strange. It says that the use of the word is foreign, and that in the covenant, because we were talking about how this is based on the covenant here, this whole thing was talking about the foreign things were actually the gods uh, that they said they were coming into, the Canaanite gods, uh, the Baals, and all the, the Ashereths and all that stuff, that those were a foreign thing. And then in the same way we said that the sin, the altars for sacrificing sin have become altars of sinning, it says that the thing that was supposed to be foreign, the thing that was supposed to be a strange thing to them, has now become the thing that they hold to, while God and his law has become the strange thing. So it's kind of uh, – uh, it's kind of horrible to think that the word of God has become foreign. Yeah. And so that's what I, I, I want to warn against is that in our life and how we're looking at Scripture, living our life and acting out our life, is the things of God becoming foreign to us. Mm. Uh, because I think that um, the world today is making those things which are supposed to be foreign. It's trying to make those things common and how we're supposed to live our lives when those things should be separate because he's a holy God. As for my sacrificial gifts, they sacrifice the flesh and eat it, but the Lord has taken no delight in them. Now he will remember their iniquity and punish them for their sins. They will return to Egypt, for Israel has forgotten his maker and built places, and Judah has multiplied fortified cities, but I will send a fire on this cities that it may consume its palatial, 
I'm not sure. Citadels is what I've got. <laughs> palatial. Yeah, palatial. Wait, maybe it's palatial. Palatial dwellings. Yeah, dwellings, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, it says that uh, what they're doing is they're sacrificing or they're offering gifts to God. And they're sacrificing and doing the things that was told of them to do, which is to eat the food, delight in it. You know, but it says that God is taking no delight in it. Mm-hmm. It's because all that they're doing is not from their heart. I think uh, in the last chapter it talks about how they don't cry out from their heart. They don't cry out from uh, their soul, the truth. They're lying, making lies about God. And so uh, because of that, God does not honor it. Matter of fact, it says he remembers their iniquity and punishes them for their sins. It goes back just to that covenant where it's saying that they reject the good. They reject God. And it's funny to say that because you see it says that they're offering these sacrifices. They're trying to uh, placate or give God what he needs, drop quotes again, what he needs, but God doesn't need any of that. Mm -hmm. How they're worshiping him is the way in which they're worshiping the bells, where the bells and the asterisks need human work in order for them to have fulfillment. They need the plight of man. But our God, Yahweh, the God of Israel, needs none of that. Right. He's the one that provides. That's right. And his desire is only for us to know him. And they know that, too, because in the very beginning it says, we're Israel. We know you. Right. They're they're claiming it, but yeah, it's not. But it's not accurate. real. Yeah, because all they're doing is the outward work. But in their hearts, they inwardly desire to do their own thing. And that goes back to our conversation last time on doctrine. It's just like having clarity on who do I believe God is? And is that in accordance with what he has revealed about himself? Like I talk with my buddies all the time where they're like, well, what's so wrong about like Mormonism? Like how they're they're viewed. And I'm like, that completely different, Mm -hmm. completely different than what God has revealed himself. Yeah. It's completely different God compared. Right. There's one true God Mm -hmm. and, and he has revealed himself by the word of God, like by the yeah. Bible, it's it's not from a prophet. It's it's not from a prophet's will or his own like yeah, undertaking. That's it, right. It's the yeah. word of God that has been yep. that has been revealed. Yeah, my wife actually just uh, uh, recently went through that scripture again, and, and uh, I believe it's in Second Peter, uh-huh. and uh, it says that it's not of one's own interpretation. own interpretation. That's right. Yeah, and I know a lot of times we want to be like, man, you know, I just believe that God is saying this from the scriptures. Like, uh, bro, it don't matter what you believe. <laughs> It is what is God literally saying because he says in his word that it is not of one owns interpretation, yeah. but it is the Holy Spirit who moves and writes these things. Even Hosea, like, man, Hosea did not choose mm-hmm. this for himself. Um, yep. God has shown this through Hosea's life, and, and yep. he's, it's a hard calling that Hosea has walked out. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's intended to show us something really important about God's character, his faithful love yeah, to us. That love he has for um, us. Mm. And just thinking about that, like uh, as far as the worship and offering our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing, Mm -hmm. that idea of acceptable to God, um, that that that's not from ourselves. It's it's in view of God's mercy Mm -hmm. in response to what he has done. What you just said about is it um, for salvation or is it? Because. Because of salvation. That's right. Yeah, um, definitely true. That reminds me of, of First Peter again. And uh, it says that uh, these things we get from God, uh, the actions that we take is amazing because it says that uh, uh, we get rewards for this. But then it says through Jesus. So it's not even our own rewards. It's it's only because right. of Jesus that we can even do these things, man. So, yeah, it's, it's a blessing, man. And, uh, yeah, God is so good. He's revealing himself. And. I hope that as we continue to stay through Hosea, guys, that we just see just the sinfulness that we have and the uh, ability to get out of it is entirely impossible, save for the fact that Yahweh saves us. And Yahweh has made a way through his son, Jesus Christ, and that we believe on him, trust in his way of salvation, his substitutionary death on the cross, then we can be relieved from these sins. We can be forgiven from these sins, and we can have wholeness in life. It's not just about, though it's important that God forgives us of our sins, because that's the the condemnation that we receive, but it's also that we're going to have a blessed and full life now, 
Now, you know, the blessing. <laughs> What's the greatest blessing of it? Knowing our maker. That's right. And that's how and that's it, a, it yeah. is it, it is a mercy of God that he has He has remembered his covenant and yeah. his promise to us. And he has fulfilled that to us in Christ Jesus. That's right. And that we would know him. Yeah. And that we that's the be, blessing we right there. We would not there. be deceived thinking that we know him, that yeah. we would actually know him. We would, we would really know, know him, man. So my question before I leave, guys, is do you know him? See you guys next week. <laughs>